So welcome to my review for my Cisco Routing and Switching Essentials. This is going to be lab 4.1.3.5. In this lab we're looking at configuring IPv4 and IPv6 interfaces. So I have Packet Tracer and I have the lab document side by side. Okay, with that said, I'm going to be working on this part right here. We're going to be configuring the IP information for R1. So let's hop, hop over to R1. Go into the CLI. Get into privilege mode. First thing I'm going to do is a show run. Just to see what's going on. So, both of my gigabit interfaces are not assigned and you can tell in the diagram I'm probably going to be using both gigabit 1 and gigabit 0 and we're going to be assigning these IP addresses to this uh, to these interfaces so I'm going to hop over to my configuration mode configure terminal first interface will probably be G0 slash 0 that lets us know that we're going to be in that interface. I'm going to be programming an IP address 172.16.20.1 and a subnet of oh, 255.255.128 or slash 25 and I'm going to turn it on with a no shutdown. So you'll notice the second I did no shutdown, that link went active. I'm going to back up one, and I'm going to program the next interface, the interface G0 slash 1. Again, I'm going to be programming its IP address, 172.16.20.129, with a also a slash 25 subnet. If you know shut down to turn it on, and that link should now be active. All right, so I finished that part of it. I'm going to move on to configuring the IPs for both IP or for PC one and PC two. I'm going to go to desktop. I'm going to go to IP configuration, and I'm going to go and again. Pretty much we're just filling information in from the chart. 16, 20.10. Make sure that your subnet is correct. The default gateway is the address of the router. It doesn't have a set DNS. It also does not set us have a setting IPv6. So that's it for that. I like to close it and go back into it just to make sure it saved. I'm going to hop over to PC2, go to desktop, go to IP configuration, and again fill in the appropriate information. Default gateway is again the IP address of the router. Double check that everything is right, that looks right. Settings are saved. So we've done step one. We're not configuring the serial interfaces because it's already uh, done. So let's go ahead. PC1 and PC2 should be able to ping each other and the dual stack server. That's the dual stack server. So let's hop over to PC1 and let's try to do that. Ping. First one we're going to do is let's try ping in PC2. 172.16.20.138. So, so far, it timed out, but it processed three of the four. So, I'm going to go ahead and ping it again. So, why did it time out the first time? Could be sending an ARP request trying to discover the path to that IP address 
that's that's a feasible explanation. All right, next let's go ahead and try to ping the dual stack server. 64.100.1.10. I'm going to assume that the first one will probably time out as well, but then should pick up. Like I said before, just rerun the ping and it should all be good. All right, so we've done step two. We can ping each other and we can ping the dual stack server. Moving on is part two. We're going to be configuring IPv6 addresses. So we're going to be going to R2 LAN interface and PC3 and PC4. So I'm going to hop over to router 2. I'm going to get into my privilege exact mode. I want to do a show run just so I can see the interfaces. So they have a link local address, but they do not have a global unicast address. So that's what we're going to be configuring. So let's hop over to configure terminal and let's go ahead and program the gigabit zero zero interface. So interface g slash or zero slash zero IPv6 address. And I'm gonna cheat a little bit. And a no shutdown. You'll notice that link should go active. With IPv6, you have to make sure that you do IPv6. That tells it that this can do hexadecimal, and we're doing a uh, slash notation for our IPs. Let's back up one. Let's navigate to gigabit 01. IPv6 address. Oh, IPv6 helps if I do a v6 not c6 again I'm going to cheat a little bit by copying the uh, IPv6 address again no shutdown should turn on both those interfaces and we're good on the router so we've done this part here let's move on to the PC3, just like with IPv4, navigate to desktop, go to IP configuration, IPv, or PC3, IPv6. All right, so why? It did not like that. Slash 64. Why is the default gateway a link local address? So I'm actually going to move that to the side. I'm going to hop back over to R2. And I'm going to do a show run. So, you'll notice, first of all, they have a link local address and a global unicast address. So the IPv6 gateway can be the global unicast address, or it can be the specific link local address for those links. Because they're unique per link, you can actually have the same IPv6 address on each segment. That's why it's FE80 colon colon 2 for both of them. Again, same default gateway on both of them, just because that's the link local address. So IPv6. Alright, exit out. Go back into it just to verify. Tapped it. Let's go do PC4 real quick. IP configuration. Again, I'm just going to be uh, copying and pasting from the chart. Makes it a little bit easier. 
again, I the gateway is the same because it's a link local address. And it saves the information. Alright, let's hop over to the command prompt. Let's try pinging, first of all. Our, lo our link local address. That's our gateway. Let's try pinging PC3. Uh, and that works. Let's try pinging our dual stack server. 2001 colon DB8 colon. 100 colon 1 double colon A and it works so let's go from PC 3 to PC 4 and it should work alright so Let's go and check results. And you should actually be able to get 100% on everything. Thank you.